we got a little head start. We got the next row of ICFs on and we put the rebar in them. Reese, have you ever built a house? No. Is this difficult so far? Not at all. So I am at least experiencing construction. You are 0% experiencing construction. Yeah. And this is going together like, like a Lego house, right? Right, yeah. Your opinion on rebar so far? Super satisfying and super easy and super fun, honestly. Now it's time to find windows because we're at a height where the windows will be starting. I know there's a window here somewhere and it's five foot two inches from over here. Well, the rough opening for this window is five feet wide. So if we measure five feet over, that puts me right there. Now I wanna find out where the bottom of the window will start. Fortunately for us, the architect designed this home to where the top of the windows will be the same level as the top of the doors. This board that Reese is holding goes to the top of the door over here. Now, I know that this window is also, it's five feet wide, but it's also four feet tall. So if I come down from the top of that board four feet, now I have found the bottom of the window rough opening. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, it doesn't really matter because if you're building your own house, you're gonna have your own techniques and different ways to find what you're looking for. But this is what I found works for me here. I'm gonna make sure that these foam blocks are nice and firmly pushed down. Go up a little bit, down a little bit, right there. And... That's the bottom of the window. There's the side. And there's the side. I need to cut this out. Then similarly, find all of the windows all the way around the house, mark them in a similar fashion, and then I'm just gonna cut them all at once. The walls are coming up pretty high right now. A good framer could probably frame these exterior walls just as fast as I'm doing this. I cut these pieces of rebar. There's a window there, there's a door here. I couldn't fit a 20 foot stick all the way between them, so I cut it to length. Setting it down in this channel here, and I'll show you why. This rebar just kinda snaps into place. On the bottom courses, I've put one out on the outside, and the inside, but on these courses going up, I'm only putting one stick of rebar per level and I'm alternating. This one will go here, the next one will go here, and the next one will go here and back and forth. I don't have an extra piece of rebar sitting here with me, but pretend like this is a piece of rebar and I need to put a vertical piece of rebar in the wall. Because these are spaced apart, I can actually fit another piece of rebar vertically all the way up between them. So it'll just sit there like that. It can't really go a whole lot of places. Goes the wall. Shoot. There's the wall. Oh, the wind sucks here, man. And this is just temporary. Now that that layer of rebar is in, it's time to put another layer of this on. This really is a DIY friendly uh, job. So I'd say if you're not good at woodworking or framing, this might be the way to go. starting to feel like a castle, which is pretty cool. This is not the size of my windows. These windows are four feet tall and that'll end up being way up here. The top of the windows will be level with the top of the doors. My blade doesn't go quite deep enough to cut through all the foam. It's just millimeters off. So, and that's it. Be prepared to have these, uh, these webs be in your way, and that's okay. Just have the right tools on hand. It's not really too annoying. Let's see if I can give that a pop. Oh yeah, 
There's a door buck just under here, and I've got the, the ICF blocks are built up just over the top of it. Now we have to put the details of the header. Normally with wood, you would use like a two by eight or two by 12, whatever the plans call for, of course, but there'd be some reinforcements over each door and window. In this case, we're using concrete, so we have to use rebar reinforcements. Lawrence came over and bent a bunch of these, and what we have to do is hook these under here like that, and I'm going to wire that into place. And you have to go two feet beyond the door buck on each side. Cover these bad boys up. We have to tie rebar up into here. Can't put the rebar down into it, so I have to slide, slide them in like that. I won't film it, but the next step is to just wire these why are these up here all the way down across the header and then when the concrete gets poured into here you can see how robust this section will be with this reinforcing steel we've got all of our icf blocks up big problem i've been having i don't know if you can hear it but this wall behind me the wind is blowing it and it's it's making quite the sound it's wanting to fall over what i had to do finally was before i ever finished topping out i've had to put braces around the perimeter of the home the three other walls have at least some and it's holding against the wind fairly well the braces that i have are being rented i'm getting them from the same place i got my foam block i'll show you how i do mine but to be honest, all the bracing systems are different and I'm told that these are pretty old. You're probably not gonna get these same exact ones, but it'll be a similar, something similar. Every ICF manufacturer that I've seen has studs built into the foam and they're easy to spot from the outside, even though on camera, you probably can't see them very well, but I have one marked here. Now these studs are plastic. They do hold fairly well. I'm told that they have the same holding power as a two by four. I don't know about that. So what I'm gonna do for the braces is screw this strong back on to that stud. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to line these slots up with this plastic stud that goes all the way to the top. And I'm gonna screw this thing through the slot through the wall. I'm using a fairly powerful impact driver, too powerful for these plastic studs. So you'll notice when I screw these in, I'm only letting it impact like once. And even then, there have been a couple times where it has stripped out. You gotta be careful. Here we go. This pin goes through this hole up here. Yeah, there we go. I did this with my wife last time and it was much easier. That's pretty much it. So you see this diagonal going down there. I'll show you what I'm doing down there. This is the foot of the brace, this diagonal piece that comes down here. This will be used for the adjustment of the wall. You wanna start by backing this out quite a ways. This will differ with whatever braces you're using, of course, but these have a really long uh, adjustment. Because I don't know how plumb that wall is now, I'd like quite a bit of adjustment in either direction to begin with. This is one of the leftover concrete stakes. And a nail, a framing nail. Put it in one of the holes. I'm using it to anchor this down to the ground. So now this isn't coming out. The nail is just putting enough pressure so this foot doesn't come up and down. Next step is take my long level, put that up against the wall. Honestly, this wall is pretty dang level already. If this wall had to go in, I'd turn it this way. If it had to come out, I'd turn it this way. And that's pretty level. Now what I'm going to do is put all of them on this wall and then, then come back and level the whole thing from one end to the other. So that all went up pretty nicely. I was pretty fortunate that the wall was relatively plumb already. This bracing system kind of has a threefold purpose. One is to keep the wall up and brace it. Another is to adjust it for plumb. The third one, which is quite necessary, involves these things, which are hard to, hey, yeah, there we go. Hey, yeah. So these, <laughs> oh goodness, are outriggers. <laughs> all right, that was rough. Wow, I don't know if those are supposed to be that difficult or if I'm just not the brightest guy. And now put our laminated plank up there. Yoink. Okay. This is pretty scary because I mean, these things are just screwed off to styrofoam, empty styrofoam. Nobody's here if I fall. 
I'm not too fond of heights. There's all my weight. You're witnessing me tackle a fear of mine in real time. I guess it works. Ah, what is that? Hop around. Eee. Okay. All right, 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 right. Okay. Lawrence came over and we plumbed the corners first. Then we made sure the house was square and then replumbed the corners. Then we ran string line from corner to corner. As Lawrence measured to the line down the wall, I was below him adjusting each upright brace. Now we have very straight walls in a square home and it's plumb, nice and ready for concrete. This took a very long time. It seems simple and quick on the video, of course, but plan for a day of just doing squaring your house up and getting the walls straight. Lawrence and I didn't take quite a day, but he's also very good at this. We had the first bad day in a long time yesterday. We started pouring the walls full of concrete and things were going okay. The concrete pump, the boom is super high, you know, tall up in the air, 60 feet or higher. About 10 to 15 minutes after we started, Lightning. <laughs> Lightning's, uh, I don't think it struck anywhere near us, but it was so close that even over the sound of the generator, the two vibrators that were going, the concrete pump, the concrete truck, it was loud, like it shook the whole job site. We all knew that uh, we had to stop because if those big concrete booms get struck, obviously the trucks get ruined or someone gets hurt or worse. I had to call and cancel the remaining trucks, but I had to still pay for them. Let's move on though. What this does do is it gives me an opportunity to show you guys the penetrations in the walls. These are gonna be filled with concrete, obviously. This, which I've installed, this is the dryer vent, and here's the PVC pipe, and this thing is removable. So we'll pour the concrete around that, and then this thing can always be removed uh, when I need to change it in the future. Where I'm kneeling right now is in the laundry room, and this pipe here is the drain for the washing machine, and there will be a shop sink right here. And so that's why I placed the U for ground here, and the dryer vent here. I should have put the U for ground in the foam of the wall, I know that now, but I didn't, and that's okay because I'm gonna have a sink right here and it'll be all covered up. Here is the wall that this sits into. This is a two inch pipe. This pipe will be in the wall cavity and it will be for gray water from the sink and from the washing machine. To explain what gray water is, instead of having the water from your sink or your washing machine or shower or whatever drain into your septic system, you drain it into a pipe that goes outside and you can use that water for um, watering your garden, mostly is what people use it for, or a yard. What you use water outside for without having to use a hose. It's kind of like free water in that you would drain it into your wastewater anyways. We also decided that we're gonna want hoses on the outside of the house on at least three of the four walls. And so that's what this is for. This is a one inch pipe from the outside of the house. We will insert the hose bib and that pipe will stick out here. Again, inside of this wall where we can plug our PEX pipe to it, feed water to the hose. We have three of those, each of them are in walls. I'm standing now at my front door and you can see the piece of wood here, here, and there. And all three of those are penetrations, pipes of some sort that I put through the wall for some reason. I screwed these pieces of wood over the top of them to protect them from blowing out or moving in weird ways while the concrete's being bored. This one here is already encased in concrete. So I'll take it off and show you guys what this might look like and why I did it. And hopefully it didn't fill up with concrete. <laughs> And it did fill up with concrete. So as you can see, there is a, a gray pipe right here going through the wall within 30 inches of the front door. And the reason this is here is so I can run wire outside to the outdoor electrical outlet that is required by code to have near the door. If I were to uncover that one and that one, you'd see roughly the same thing appears for electricity that'll run a light out under the front door cover entrance area. So, there's a three inch pipe and this is for ductless mini split head unit. It's gonna go right here and the lines that feed the head unit from the outside are gonna go through this pipe. Now there's a drop on this pipe, you know, over the, through the 13 inch wall, it drops a little over a quarter inch because this thing needs to drain outside. I have five of these spread throughout the home because that's how many we're going to put 
in our house to heat and cool the home. So I'm not gonna take you through every penetration that I have in my home because your house is gonna be different. It's gonna be laid out differently. I just wanted to show you a little bit of what my plan was for my house. I kind of got over my fear of heights after I put this uh, handrail on. Everybody worked so hard to get this done today. It was messy and the first day we failed, so this ended up being a lot more expensive than we wanted it to be, but full of concrete. If you look here, you can see these, these bolts that are sticking up out of the mud. Those go down into the mud and they, they have an L at the bottom. They're called J bolts, but they're shaped like an L so that we can put the top sill plates on, which are boards that'll just sit on here for the trusses to connect to. Lawrence did an amazing job. He finished this thing using a laser and he finished it and checked it, finished it, checked it. And it was pretty tedious, but he finally got it. You know, it's perfectly level all the way around. I'm gonna show you some of the problems that happened here. So as you can see here, this corner piece moved that way. The same thing happened on that side over there. No other corners moved. Everything else stayed nice and tight. If I were to do this again, I would put strapping on all the corners, inside, outside, everything. And it happened in, in both directions. They split pretty dang uh, wide and lifted up off of it, you know, off. And here is another major problem we had. So the foam here blew out and the concrete is keeping it blown out. I decided to not mess with it. We caught this far too late and I decided to leave it alone, let it set up, and I will tear all this out, grind up the concrete and patch it up with foam again. But yeah, we, we just didn't see it until after we were almost done. So it could have been way worse, of course. We just didn't have enough eyes on the wall, I guess. And then the last thing I wanna show you guys, and you can't, you can't even see it, on the camera. If you look behind me here, you can see how messy the wall, the pour was. It got it got everywhere on the wall. Not just on the wall, but it splashed down onto my floor as well. My nice colored floor that the concrete team worked so hard to get, you know, beautiful, now has gray splotches of this concrete on it. And we tried for a good, I don't know, hour and a half. Wire brushes and my buddy even brought over a powered, a powered brush that just was pretty gnarly. We got some of it off but uh, most of my floor is now splattered in gray concrete. It's just, it is what it is, and we are in a hurry. I should have gone with my instinct and covered my floors. I was advised not to, but um, yeah, cover your floors the second year you can. Stay tuned though, because the next video, we are setting roof trusses, and we're excited.